Right, I think these two thermo switches on the Golf have failed. Um, they should be passing current at low temperature, but uh, I think I'm getting no continuity or virtually no continuity through them. I'm just going to check. So I'm getting no continuity whatsoever. So that is continuity. And that is no continuity. And the other one, again, same thing, open circuit. It should be closed at this temperature and it's open. So these two switches, the red one um, controls the uh, heater element under the inlet manifold um, up to a certain temperature. I think it's about 80 degrees C and the grey one controls the automatic choke and that's up to about 40 degrees C. Once the uh, coolant hits that temperature they shut off um, but they're not doing anything. They're not allowing either of those functions to work. Unfortunately to change these two thermo switches I've got to drain part of the coolant system. Everything above this level has to be drained out. It's not a huge amount I don't think. Next, I'm going to attempt to remove one of these clips without breaking anything. I don't know if it's going to come out easily or difficult. Oh, that seems ridiculously easy. That's one metal clip. And hopefully we've removed enough coolant now to allow this to come out without pissing over it. It's crossed. Yes, that worked. should be a rubber o-ring in there as well. Oh, here we go. One rubber o-ring. New sensor and seal. I'm just going to make sure the orientation matches the plug. It does. Good. Push that home. Hopefully this won't be too much of a fight. The new seal definitely, definitely uh, fresher. The big question is, can I get the spring clip back in? Not too much aggro. Oh, that seems to pop in nice and easy. I was expecting that to put up a bit of a fight. Good. That's one. Number two. These spring clips really do come out nicely. I was expecting them to be a lot tighter than that. That looks like it's had a wallop at some point. It's dented. Sensors dented on the bottom of it. I don't know quite what happened to that. So the orientation is slightly different on this one. Okay, so the big question now is, will they leak? Right, we're up to running temperature, we've got no leaks. Both the switches have switched off uh, in sequence. Um, so we're happy that they're both working, so brilliant. I'm pleased with that. I'm kind of wishing I'd done the uh, temperature sensor on the bottom now, but 
um, it's working, so we'll leave it for another day. I'm curious to know what's inside these uh, temperature switches and why it's failed. I'm going to cut one open and see what's inside it. Right, I'm just waiting for it to cool down. I've put a cut around the outside as well. Let's find out what's inside. Okay, I'm none the wiser as to how it actually works. Um, on the outside we've got the copper casing, then underneath that inside there's a metal disc, then on top of that there is a copper um, cylinder which is attached effectively to this, so uh, which I've cut off. So this is one part like that um, and inside through the middle of that there is a pin here uh, and pushes and you can see the corrosion in there so this switch was definitely done for no coming back from that uh, pushes a contact open or closed this is why the switch failed corrosion lots of it um, once I scraped some of the corrosion away you can see that the switch had failed in the open position which is why we get no current through it um, that seems to be on like a spring, so I'm pretty sure that that little metal rod expands and contracts. Or possibly the metal plate that's in there is like a disc that, that expands and pops uh, when it gets to a certain temperature. It's possible that this disc is shaped in a way that um, as it heats up it, it moves or becomes concave and pushes the, um, uh, the uh, switch closed. Or possibly there was wax and it's all, all leaked out. I'm going to open the other one differently. Hot, hot, hot. So we've got all this dry material in here, which I'm not sure what it is. I mean, this could have been wax at one point. Hard to say, it just seems a bit dry for wax. There's one of those pins, I'm going to dig that out. And under there, there should be the switch contact. So there's one that's just disintegrated. It's just turned to mush. So all the green is the copper from the contact, so I'm guessing that um, moisture or corrosion has got, or coolant or water or something has gotten in there. Let's empty that out. So yeah, the contact's completely gone in there. I suppose it is 30 years old. Anyway, we know what that bit is. Let's have a look at the other bit. So this is the other part of the system, and this should have... It has, it's got a rubber seal on there. And then the pin fits down the middle, and under there there's a disc. But I don't quite know what the, the method of operation is. Something pushes the pin to open and close the contacts. Um, and I don't know if it's just movement of the copper, whether the base expands and contracts, or whether there's a fluid or some kind of uh, wax in there, I don't know. Okay, this one is slightly different in the sense that the inner hat is plastic. At least it feels like plastic. Um, but other than that it's the same and we do have a metal disc in this one as well and as I guessed on the last one, let me try and get the light, as I guessed on the last one it is slightly convex so I'm going to put a bit of heat on it and see if it pops the other way and if it does we know how this works. 
Um, if it does pop, it means that this disc at a certain temperature inverts and pushes the pin closed. Right, I've got the disc and it's currently um, dished downwards. Difficult to describe really, but it's slightly dished downwards. So I'm going to heat it up and see if it changes state. Oh, yep. Made a very loud click and it's inverted. So it's now concave rather than. No. So it made a loud click and it is now convex rather than concave. Oh, and it just clicked back again. Click. Very clever. Very simple. There you go. Click. Click. So that's the action that pushes the pin. Click. Do that all day.